high fans of high quality entertainment. I am with some Sparks fans, and we are going to be ranking all of the songs on their third album, Kimono My House, from 1974. And uh, one of the new guests is Tim. And Tim, Ooh. tell us a little bit about your project that's coming out next year. So, uh, yes, my name's Tim. Um, I'm from Pale Wizard Records. We're a record label based in the southwest of England. Um, and we've been putting together over the last few years um, a series of tribute albums called 50 Years Later. Um, now, obviously, everyone knows what tribute albums are, um, but ours are a little different because they come out 50 years later to the day. Um, so it's been a recent thing. We've only done three of them before. Uh, the first one was for Alice Cooper's Killer, which came out in 1971. Um, then we did Ziggy Stardust in 1972 we'll, for a 2022's release. Uh, this year we've released an album by the Welsh metal band called Budgie. Um, I don't know if anybody knows those. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> some people do, some people don't. The name. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we're working on currently um, for 2024, Kimono My House by Sparks. Cool. So personally, I'm most excited about this one because uh, in recent years Sparks has become my favourite band. So. It's been a bit of a passion project for me. Um, and yeah, it's going to be released 50 years later to the day on the 1st of May, 2024. Oh, wow. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. It'll be on vinyl. It'll be on CD. Um, it'll be digital. Um, so you'll be able to see it on streaming um, and, and downloads. If people still download MP3s and things from Bandcamp. <laughs> And I'll have a link for, you have a Kickstarter account? Or? Yeah, we're currently running, um, it's like an historical, because we've always run a Kickstarter campaign for each one. Um, we've done one for this one as well. So it's currently running at the moment. It runs until the end of August. And at the moment, it's currently your only chance really to, to pre-order the record um, before next year, before, okay. you know, a month before it comes out. Um, if you order on the Kickstarter, you get some exclusive goodies. Um, there's things like vinyl, uh, art prints. Um, there's drinks coasters um and there's an exclusive vinyl color just for the kickstarter so for those vinyl collectors out there um we sort of recommend if you want the exclusive color you can only get it from kickstarter so you've only got until the end of august to secure that one cool. so, so yeah, we've got 10 bands 10 bands covering yeah. uh, all 10 songs on kimono basically wow. um, tim are ron and russell participating and giving you any help with this they are not no <laughs> sadly not um <clears throat> i've been a little bit unsure about contacting the band i know they're quite sort of hands-on with the fan base to some extent but um obviously we license all the material um it's all sort of paid for through the um mechanical rights broadcasting uh, uh, company in the uk so they will be paid for their uh, for their efforts a percentage of all the records does go to warren russell because they wrote all the songs yeah. mm -hmm. um so yeah there's um, there's no there's no they're going to get something out of it so they probably will know about it if not now then very soon yeah. Um, but as of yet, we haven't contacted the actual band. Um, I've been in touch with Martin Gordon, who's um, going to write some sleep notes for me, which is uh, which is a big thing because we've never had a, a participant from an actual album we've done contribute in that way before. So that's exciting. And uh, Rude from the fan mail website as well has been a has been a bastion of knowledge for me. He's helped me out um, numerous times over the last few months and helped put this together. He's also going to write some uh, some sleep notes as well on the album. There was a tribute album, I don't know if any of you remember, about over 20 years ago mm -hmm. from fan mail or something. Yeah. I don't have it anymore. I gave it to somebody else, but it was good. And I, I remember Ron, Ron and Russell thanking them for doing it. So. Yes, yes, I, I did hear that. Yeah, uh, Root did tell me that. <laughs> yeah. um, there was also a, a tribute album a few years ago to, to raise money for, I think, Stevie Nister's brother. Mm -hmm. Any of you know mm -hmm. about that? No. Um, Again, yeah, Ron and Russell did thank the people for producing that one as well. So I'm hoping that we'll get some kind of uh, acknowledgement at some point down the line. I'm planning on sending them copies, you know, regardless um, through through the label. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And when it comes out, I'll I'll do a review on my channel for you. And absolutely, I will send you all copies. I'll yeah. Help pr promote it, and yeah, better be glowing. <laughs> and then we will all have to vote on which of the. Uh, the covers are yeah. our favorite, and yeah, and we can rank them in a year and rank rank the covers and see how close to the actual original song list it is. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, do you, well, do you mind if I ask you a, a couple of questions uh, real quick about your oh, your project? Because oh, it's it's so fascinating. So first off, uh, 
how much so you've done this a couple of times before how much of your did, were the others uh funded via kickstarter as well um well the first one was yeah um we've done a kickstarter for each one just because we're sticklers for tradition more than anything um we just find the kickstarter because it costs about five thousand six thousand pounds to, to print up vinyl um in the quantities mm. that we're printing sort of 500 copies of on vinyl um, so it's a, that's an expensive endeavor. So that's really what the Kickstarter is for. Um, and just because we did it for the first one for Killer when we were just starting out, um, we've just done it the same each each time. Um, so yeah, that, that's why we're using Kickstarter. It's just a tradition thing, I think, for us. And how much <laughs> how much of that has had to go toward those licensing fees? Um, so there's a percentage um, on each copy you you produce on the on all, all physical copies. Um, which then goes to to the, to the original songwriters. So um, I think it's something like sort of fifteen percent. Oh wow! So the retail price would then go on to them. And the the, I, the bands um, that um, that you've contacted to to re record their their covers are they local to you, or are they all UK based? Or yeah, or on on this one they're worldwide. Um, We've got a couple of bands from the USA, We've got a band from Sweden, um, and a few bands from the UK as well. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the kind of genre we work in is sort of, sort of psychedelic rock, stoner rock, that kind of thing. Cool. Um, so there's a few sort of heavier bands on there. Um, so yeah, I, I, I had to choose wisely for Sparks because obviously doing Budgie last year, that was a they were more of a heavy metal band, so it was quite easy for to find bands that could do that kind of thing. But with Sparks, I really had to look for bands that had that certain something extra, something a little bit, oh, I don't know, you know, that, that, that sort of extra bit that Sparks have that most bands don't. You know, you need to look for that quirky nature in another band and, and find and find every single band that I approach. I, I remember what Edgar Wright said in the documentary when he was approaching people for interviews and he sort of just did it blind. And a lot of the time um, they were Sparks bands. Yeah. I find that with the bands that I approach, nine out of ten times, they wow. because they were a little bit left field, they were Sparks fans as well. And um, you got to find a hell of a vocalist too, I'm sure. Well, indeed, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're going to be faithful. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah a couple of female fronted bands. Um, we have a band called Silvery, um, which when when I first started thinking about doing this project earlier, sort of end of last year, early this year, I went on all the Sparks groups on Facebook and said. This is what we're planning on doing, guys. Have you got any recommendations for bands? And about half a dozen people said this band Silvery from London. Um, and I looked them up, and they're massively influenced by Sparks and XTC and all that kind of thing. Well, it's yeah. quite obvious. So, um, so I contacted them straight away, and they were well up for it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that, that was good. <laughs> hey, Tim, um, I know you were thinking about additional songs to have on the That's uh, right, album yes, yes and i'm wondering if you made any decisions yet i the general consensus from the fan base seems to be do barbecue tea and lost and found as bonus yeah track. yeah yeah which makes yeah. sense obviously yeah. um we have approached a band about doing a song from propaganda but just because they were really keen on doing it um so i think it might end up being lost and found barbecue tea and one extra from propaganda so keeping it all within that that year which is a first for us because on previous volumes of this series, when we've done the original album is on vinyl. It's just like, it's just the original album, but we do the bonus tracks on CD um, and we've just thrown that open to any, any era. So on Bowie, there's stuff from like uh, Let's Dance on, uh, on Alice Cooper. There was stuff from later on in the seventies. We think it was the solo stuff, not even the Alice Cooper band. And then with Budgie, we had stuff from all over their career on, on as, as bonus CD uh, tracks. So with this, with the Sparks one, I just wanted it to be, 1974 stuff, yeah. So, and I'm glad that everyone saw her barbecue and lost and found because I think those would be great covers. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've, I've not heard a cover of those songs. Have any of you heard a cover of either of those songs? No, 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 yeah, it should be interesting. Just got to find the bands to do it. Though. And, uh, Tim, <laughs> when did you first hear of Sparks? So, I'm a, I'm quite a recent convert, really. Um, I've worked in the music industry for a long, long time, so I'm aware, I was aware of, of Sparks. Um, from from an early age, I would say, but I've never. I always got them confused with craft work when I was younger. <laughs> I don't know why that a little, be. a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, 
whilst I'm into uh, music massively, um, uh, my other love is film, and um, I buy films religiously on Blu-ray. I've got stacks and stacks of the things. So mm. I, I bought a copy of Annette because I'm into sort of you know weird art house cinema and uh, watched, watched it, not knowing they did the music. I knew it was a musical, not knowing they did the music. Um, so this would have been late 2020, I suppose, early 2021. Um, watched the film, and I thought it was just amazing, and loved the music. Obviously, I saw the sparks were in it at the beginning in the first scene, and I thought, oh, wow, okay, that's cool. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate a bit more. I knew this town, and I knew number one in heaven, but I didn't really know much more than that. So... Um, the first album I listened to properly was um, Steady Drip 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 because it was the new album at the time. Oh, okay. And um, I still, I mean, ever since I've listened to that, I've been listening to nothing but Sparks pretty much for the last couple of years. And I still stand by all that. It's probably my favourite song, the first song I heard properly. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I've been having a couple computer glitches. What song did you say is your favourite? Um, all That. The first proper oh. song I've yeah. ever yeah. heard. Yeah. And of course, they've got if my computer time. goes out, I'll just get back on. I don't know yeah, why. No it's problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul, do you have any questions for Tim before we rank? I, I was just going to say, I, I love the cover art that you put up. I don't know if that's the final cover it, art, but it, yeah, it, I think it looks yeah, really great. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. bringing people in with Kickstarter as well, I think getting the fan base engaged. Sparks have got a really committed fan base as i'm sure you know better that's, than anybody um, yeah that's what i that's what i sold it to because um it's me and another guy called dan run the record label um and the first one the alice cooper one was a, a joint decision we were we were quite sort of agreed we were going to do that because he's a massive alice cooper fan so we had to do that and then when it came to 72 um bowie was a, a joint decision as well um when it came to 1973 uh, with the Budgie album, uh, we could not agree. We had we were arguing and arguing for weeks. And weeks. <laughs> so we came to a kind of you know a mutual understanding that he would get to choose the album for seventy three, and I would choose the album for seventy four. So Budgie was his choice, and Sparks is mine. And he was a bit unsure about doing Sparks because it's a little bit outside of our usual wheelhouse. But um, I sort of I saw it to him as the, the, the fan base are passionate. They're you know they they seem to be getting bigger by the day and maybe bigger now than they've ever been and they're very passionate and i'm still on board with us for, for have, have you told them yet that 1975 is indiscreet i did try that <laughs> 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 he's not having it we have planned 75 actually i'm not allowed to say i'm uh, yeah okay I want the instructions to be quiet but we do have plans for mm. 75 and it's quite exciting so yeah. probably won't be as good as next year 74 though will it so mm. that'll be the best it's gonna be the one yeah <laughs> 75. You could do Queen's Night, Night at the Opera for We could, for yeah, that would come up in the discussion. Um, we'd need some really brave bands to take that one on. Yeah. But then I found Indeed. 10 bands to do Spark songs, so anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> so so before we start on ranking, uh, I'll go around for, you know, anything that you guys are doing online, like you want to promote it again, like Christian, you go first. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, I've been doing my podcast all you ever think about is sparks uh, where at least it started off um with a a uh going going through their entire musical history and all of their their albums in chronological order uh from the beginning uh, i've only gotten through gosh i don't know what am i up to 12 or 13 years and uh how you know what four decades left to go so yeah. so by the time you know i'm about the age that the uh, male brothers are now i'm maybe done um uh, uh, monty um who's been um helping me out from the very beginning uh he has uh, become my co-host over the last uh, several episodes um finally got up uh, the first one that deals with the 1982 album uh, "Angst in My Pants." Yep, I listened to that, one, to that yeah. one a lot, yep. and uh, that's that's pretty much uh, what I'm doing in in Sparksland. Uh, beyond that, I'm a stage actor, uh, film actor here in in uh, in Austin, Texas, and um, sometimes I try to be a musician, and you know, and sometimes that works, and and uh, more often than not, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, but happy to be here. And Monte. 
Oh, looks like he uh, oh, he's frozen. He froze. No, I'm he's back. In well, I'm back. I guess he won't re- Wait, he's moving a little bit. He, I'm moving mocking. a little bit. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you froze for a minute. Okay, so I assume you want if, me if to you go don't next. want to promote anything, just just say so. <laughs> all I want to do is promote goodwill and understanding among all people. And that's it for me. Okay. But if I were to add right. to that, yeah. then I would say that I'm very honored to hear Christian refer to me as his co-host because I think of it more of a sidekick because <laughs> Christian is just so awesome with that podcast. And I hope everybody will start to listen to it. Um, but that's been really fun. And lately, uh, I'm an old school guy. I've been around since 74, 75. And so it's been really fun. And lately, I've been thinking about their whole catalog and how it all comes together a lot. And I've got, I used to do, I I like to write. So lately I've started to just write up little kind of reviews, I guess, or just kind of capturing my thoughts, looking at some of these albums 40, 50 years out now. And I just did a couple of them and I'm kind of inclined to, to do that again. Uh, It's it's really fun to just look at them and think about where Sparks were in their career and how they're growing. And writing is a medium that I enjoy. I I do have an idea for a YouTube channel, but I have not quite gotten to it yet. But getting to the point about the fan base, I think what I want to really explore is uh, what does Sparks mean to people in the context of there, you know, there, this constant dynamic, I won't say tension because it's not attention, but dynamic of entertainment and art, which is at the heart of Sparks's music. And to me, it's so fascinating how they meld them or how they go one way or the other. But uh, there are always both elements there. And I think Paul will tell us that they often talk about that themselves in their music. So I want to explore that a little bit. But, you know, time hasn't quite permitted me to get there yet, but I will. And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and Joe? Yes, I'm Joe. I don't have a podcast or a YouTube channel. I kind of jump on people's things. You know, hey, Joe, you want to be on my podcast? I say, yes. Um, I'm, I'm a singer. I don't have a band, but I've sang, I sing with local punk bands or rock and roll bands. So I wish I had a band. I would try to do one of the pro, I would do Barbie Cutie or Lost yeah. and Found, yeah. I like right. too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad. Yeah. I just like I like singing that. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, I am a drummer. I do taiko drumming and African drumming. So I'm running around a lot doing stuff. So I'm just starting into writing again about sparks or my cats or something in space. I don't know. Those are the things I like. Um, so I just love music. I got a lot of music, local music events. So I have to settle down and start writing. Um, yeah. I've, I found some old Sparks notes from various things that I I saw Sparks or I met Ron and Russell or whatever, and so I it's all detailed what what, I, what happened. So now I could just expand on it because I don't remember half the stuff. So wow, cool. Yeah. And uh, Paul, I'm sorry we've run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, you used that joke last in, time. I'm, I'm, I'm all sorry all to see a pattern. <laughs> yes. I think it was for me as well. I'm getting paranoid. <laughs> Um, No, I'm Paul, and I've had a fascination for years with like little Easter eggs and little jokes that Sparks put in their music, because one of the things I love about Sparks is you can know a song intimately by them, and then after 20 or 30 listens or, you know, 200 listens, you you can notice something new. And I, I find it incredible just how deep this music goes. So I joined a Facebook group a few years ago and started chatting about some of these ideas. And just from writing about it, that developed into a blog. And more recently, I've got a YouTube channel called Meta Sparks, where I'm doing these deep dives into the albums yeah. and, uh, and into a net as well. Um, and yeah, basically, I think I'm, I'm finding some things that people are connecting with some of these ideas. So hopefully um, I'm, I'm spotting some good things and starting some good conversations. So yeah, that's me. Yeah. And I'll have a link for everybody's, whatever they're doing for this video. So now we're going to rank the 10 songs on Kimono My House. Uh, so number 10, I guess we'll start with Tim and we'll go Monte. Joe, Paul, Christian, and then me. So we'll start with what is number 10? And, and we'll also talk about the, uh, at the end, we'll talk about Barbecue and 
lost and found a little bit, but what would be your number 10 song, Tim? Okay, um, I found sort of putting number 10, number 9 together quite easy, and then putting number 1, 2, and 3 together quite easy. But all the songs in the middle, that was what gave me the most mm. most aggro doing this. So um, that, that took more thought. But number 10 for me was in my family. That's, that's quite easy. Um, I do like the song, but I just think it's just like a, it's a two-minute song stretched out to four minutes, really. <clears throat> Monty? All right. Uh, ditto? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Ditto. Um, you know... <laughs> I, I want to preface it by just saying that I, I put these into categories because it's just too hard for me, but I will say I like, like Tim, I do have a nine and 10 and uh, you know, I would have to say if, if I had to rank one as 10, it would be in my family. Yeah. It just, you know, and, and part of it is that there's so many other, you know, when you hear barbecue, you got to wonder why that one wasn't on the album. Exactly. And so this is where I would replace it personally. Yeah. And uh, one thing about that song is it's got one of my favorite lines, going to hang myself from my oh, family yeah. tree. That's my favorite line. <laughs> <That's a highlight. laughs> well, we should mention that all of these songs are great songs. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's yeah. why this is so hard. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. yeah. Joe? Yeah, I rank it as my least favorite as well, uh, but yeah. that's really underselling it because on any other album, I think it would be right there at the top. Uh, yeah. I, I love the fade out with the, that bass solo about bass riff yeah. uh, it, it's a fantastic song but just in the context of kimono my house i think i'm going to qualify everything below five as saying <laughs> yeah it, it might be ranking lowly uh, low down but i love this song yeah, yeah but yeah in my family for me yeah and joe well i want to make paul and monty crazy so i picked Thank God it's not Christmas. No, you can't. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? And, and only and the reason I did that, I thought when I first listened to the album <laughs> when I was eighteen, I just I liked fast songs, and I guess that was too slow. Now I appreciate it much more. So I'm just looking at it from an eighteen year old brain that just, you know, <laughs> punk girl. Um, so that's why. Whoa, whoa. But, but also, I wanted to make you guys a little crazy. But it it, it includes one of the best piano solos mm. ever. You mean do 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 yeah. Oh no, that's a that's hard. That's that's a hard one. Okay. Christian. You know, uh I just want to start off by saying like kind of like what Monty was indicating. I, I was thinking about maybe different categories I could place these in, and then, and then I started thinking, well, you know, what if I rate these by sub categories like uh, which you know are the lyrics particularly well written is you know does this have a better beat how's the instrumentation and then at the end of it i just said no i can't i can't do that yeah, yeah. it's just it's too subjective uh objectively i think it's a uh, start to finish an incredible album uh, cut to the chase number 10 in my family yeah that's a the, the uh, hang myself from my family tree is, a, yeah. is one of the very best lines of the yeah. entire album, but I mean everything else is just so ten out of ten strong across the board. Um, and in my family, just uh, you know, it just sort of um, I, I would never skip over a track listening to to this. But if you know, if someone put a gun to my head, this would have to be the one. Yeah. That, that, that's what I was thinking too. At some time, we could maybe get together and mm -hmm. do like our top ten favorite lines from songs. Yeah, like uh, you know, like one or two lines, and do a top ten for it. Because I, I think really that would fun. be one line that would be in the top ten for sure. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. Larry, I, I don't know how you're doing on listenership, but getting us together for a fourth time would probably triple you down to about three or four, <laughs> all of whom would be related to us. So yeah, yeah. But we're ready. We're ready. Okay. okay, number nine, Tim. Yeah, this is tough, isn't it? It's really tough. Um, number nine uh, complaints for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I love it. So it's it's hard. It's a real sort of you know rock and roll dancey tune. But uh, yeah, I, I I eventually went with complaints. So yeah, complaints number nine. I, I forgot. I jump in. I, I forgot to mention uh, my number ten. It's 
in my family. And actually, I know, I know you're saying barbecue, but I actually love Lost and Found even more than barbecue. So, uh, yeah, I, I, if those two were on, my, my number nine is also complaints. And if, yeah. those, if Lost and Found and barbecue were yep. there in those places, no problem with that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think they would still be my nine and 10, but they would be a stronger nine and 10. It took me such a long time to put complaints in my family at the bottom. I, I, I thought it wasn't an obvious choice, but I clearly um, I'm the same as everybody else. So. Yeah. But yeah, with complaints, that but there's a guitar solo towards the end, and then halfway yes. through it, the tempo of the song doubles. Mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely love that bit. It's so yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, my number nine is also complaints. Uh, and that the the speed the tempo thing that you're talking about is a really cool moment. So yeah, it's uh, it's all it's this has been <clears throat> this has been a hand wringing experience. But yeah, I, I'm gonna say that was number nine for me as well. Okay. So my number nine and eight uh, equator for number nine. You know, between equator and eight, which is complaints. I don't know. I, I just think I, I like complaints just a tad more. And the, you know, the, uh, the end of the equator, <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of like, I, I love it and I hate it at the same time. <laughs> you know, when Russell's doing his, it's just Russell's vocals. And, uh, so yeah, number, yeah, number nine is equator. Number eight complaints. So Tim, number eight. So number yeah, this is where it got really, really tough. And I think this is where it might sort of um, be a bit different for us all now, maybe. I've gone with um, falling in love with myself again for number eight. Um, oh, I don't love it. <laughs> so it's really hard to put down there. But some things got to go at number eight. And uh, yeah. after yeah. much, much deliberation, um, I kind of like the other songs a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, falling in love with myself again for number eight for me. Not, I'm not happy doing that, but yeah. <laughs> I know this is painful. This is yeah, painful. this is getting to Sophie's choice territory already. Who's, who's, I, who's yeah, idea? We're only on eight, and I have to agree with that. It's like, this is hard, but I, I well, again, I'm with Tim. Eight, even though I love the song, you know, and I love the way um, when he goes falling, falling, and the first time is the guitar, do 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 and then the second time is do 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 I just love that little part of the song. So, but if you're making us choose, I guess I have to go with that. Yeah, I agree with that. That call and response with the guitar and the bass first time, then the drums is are so good. Um, it, it's I actually put it in the same place, so yeah, it looks like our lists are incredibly wow. similar. But wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's such a great song. I I'd love uh, um, Sparks have got this habit of um, coming up with a theme for a song and revisiting it years later. Mm -hmm. And with falling in love with myself, they did. Um, I married myself in 2002 yep. on little beethoven and I, I love that on this album there are lots of little seeds that later on grow into different songs throughout their career but all of which sound completely different to each other i agree uh okay i guess i'll go then uh have we gotten to you joe no oh, actually I, uh, I didn't give number nine for me which was complaints okay but I do love wanna... the guitar at the end. So I, I had it at eight, then it was nine. Then, you know, it was one of those things. Didn't want you to be yeah. left out in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> we do yeah. this a lot, by the way, when we get together. I know. I guess I better turn on my little pineapple. Maybe you'll see me. Oh. Uh, <laughs> eight in my family. Yeah. But I, but that line, got to hang myself from my family. <laughs> is one of my favorite. I was actually yeah. doing that already. I have a notebook writing my favorite lines from Spark Songs whenever yeah. I hear it oh yeah write that down so yeah so, yeah we gotta do that yeah. uh so my number eight was equator and uh equator uh, again i don't think you know the rest of us have to uh, keep you know reminding the audience we love all of these songs mm -hmm. it's impossible to choose equator to me uh some i don't know what uh 
who wrote this. I think it was on on allmusic.com or something, but they compared uh, Sparks or called Sparks musical Marmite. You know, it's just going to be disgusting to some people and it's going to be heavenly, you know, to others. And this is exactly one of those songs that that's to me sounds like musical Marmite. I can easily see how that the trilling falsetto uh, of, of Russell's, especially as it goes on and on and on, uh, could turn uh, a lot of people off if they don't already, uh, if Sparks hasn't already clicked uh, for them. It's uh, in, in a lot of ways, it's a Sparks fans song. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fantastic way to close out the album. I couldn't imagine replacing it with anything else, but you know, if we're doing the ranking thing, yeah, that's that's going to be my number eight. Yeah. So I guess switch it around, but I'll start with number seven. Uh, it's getting a little confusing there. So number seven for me, these these are all great songs, of course. Talent is an asset with some great drumming by Dinky Diamond, very mm -hmm. underrated drummer. Uh, and, you know, and of course, the subject matter about Albert Einstein, not too many bands were writing about Albert Einstein. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's my number seven. My number seven. Um, okay, Amateur Hour for me. Um, and it's obviously a great single. It was the second single in the, in the UK. Uh, didn't do quite as well, obviously, as, uh, as the, uh, this band did. But... Um, for me, I think I prefer this time because I've ranked it higher. Uh, obviously, ranked a few songs higher. Um, be interesting to see where everyone else puts them as rare. I've got a feeling it's one of those songs that's really well loved and it's going to be near the top for a lot of people. But again, something had to go in at number seven, and yep. it's a great song. It's so hard to do this. So I've decided I'm going to rank them all one. But I'm gonna call this call them 1.9, 1. 1.8, 1. <laughs> 1. 1.7. Oh, you're cheating. Like yeah, that's that. fine. Wish you you can that. take it however you want, but no, nah, I'm gonna go with one my 1. 1.7 is going to be hasta mañana, Monsieur. <laughs> yeah. But it's still number one, but it's 1. 1.7. And I don't really have anything I can say. I mean, it's such a great song. So, you know, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I mean. I don't feel a need to defend it. I, I, I'm with Christian. There's no point in having the same uh, comment after, before every song. You know? right. So it's a given at this point. <laughs> and I think Russell wrote the lyrics for that too, right? Which one? For for oh. Asta. He wrote the lyrics, oh, didn't he? Asta Manana? Yeah. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard that or read that. Yeah. I hadn't heard that either. And it was yeah, Roger. It would be interesting. Yeah. You know, it was Roger and Pineapple, right, Joe? And right. Pineapple. On in the street. Yeah. Well, my 1.7 1. 1. <laughs> is Here in Heaven. Um, and, and no, you are killing me. Yeah. No, I'm just... I, I'm you call watching. yourself a Sparks fan? <laughs> I know. No I one am. situation, see? <laughs> I mean, I love that song. I, I mean, only Ron can make the song about suicide pack gone wrong. Hilarious. Yeah. Or, you know. Good point. So it was oh, Juliet. I thought we had agreed. I thought now I know why yeah. you took let me take the now I know why you let me take the lead. I mean, come on, yeah. it doesn't yeah. get better than that. Or like it is hell that knowing that your health will keep you out of here <laughs> for many, many years. Right. Yeah, it's like, mm, you know, she's gonna live a long time. He's a <laughs> sucker in the sky. No, it's a great song. Yeah. One one point seven. Paul. Um Tim and I have remarkably similar tastes, I think, because I put wow. Amateur Hour as well, and I thought I was going to be the only one ranking it this slowly. Great minds um, think alike, sequel. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, it, some of their best lyrics, because um, I, I love the premise of the song being about, you know, puberty and getting good at sleeping with women, like practising at sex. And that that opening line of lawns go lawns grow plush in the hinterland is the perfect little setting for a one night stand. I think it's the funniest way to start a song about puberty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess it's me. Uh, so seven, I could I I, I couldn't decide. So uh, I ended up settling on uh, falling in love with myself again. 
uh, which uh, a few things are are unique about that song in the context of the album musically. I think it's the only one that has like a, a three four waltz rhythm, mm -hmm. and uh, it has this kind of like uh, it's almost like a late baroque sounding thing to it. Like I imagine it being like a like a Haydn or something or more more lighthearted Mozart thing. Uh, especially with, isn't, isn't there a harpsichord sound in there somewhere? Or I think I'm, I must be thinking of something else. The uh, the call and response uh, is great. There's some really fun bass notes that uh, that Martin's doing there. But yeah, uh, all in all, uh, it's going to rank just a little bit below the next one that I have that we'll get to. My number six, even though I think it's a great song. <laughs> is uh, Amateur Hour. I, I especially love the, the little break that Russell, you know, it's just Russell's vocals in, in the middle. Uh, I actually, I love the live performance, the way they end it live, instead of just fading it out on, on the album. That's the only negative about it, but still, it's, yeah, the lyrics are great, and it's number six for me. Number six for me, um, Equator. Um no, yeah, this is the most out there song on the album, and this one has got quite a few sort of strange responses from people. That um, we have a studio that uh, we have bands rehearsing in all the time, and I've been playing Sparks constantly. And whenever Equator's on, and anyone hears it, the reactions sort of uh, range from absolute disgust <laughs> to, "Oh, right, what is this? This is amazing!" So it's it's one of those, as uh, I think Christian said. Marmite songs. It is a mm -hmm. love it or hate it kind of thing. I've actually had someone come up to me and say, "Can you turn this off? This is real." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "This is great. Listen to it. It's Equator." <laughs> Number six for me, Equator. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just add? Yeah, I'm <laughs> the same as Tim one more time. <laughs> yeah. um, we I, didn't I, I at all before this. No, yeah, right. at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I. I absolutely love it i think um uh, i'd love the story of arranging to meet somebody on the equator but not yeah. saying where on the equator just giving it time it's got a, probably my favorite sparks lyric it's um uh, all of the gifts are now melted or dead yeah. <laughs> i think mean, that's such a funny image and then it follows it up with and i'm sorry sorry it's like like apologizing yeah in uh, advance. as if he hasn't been stood up you know as if uh, uh as if it's his fault that he hasn't found her. <laughs> not, not that he's just been ditched. But yeah, and that, that end as well. I, I, I understand why it divides people, but it stands out so much on the album because the album is so tight with like every second of it, like tightly mm -hmm. orchestrated. And then these last two minutes of just Russell doing his thing, I, I, I think it's a great ending. Yeah. When you think oh, the album's a, like 38 minutes long and there's at least just two minutes. <laughs> Russell's just singing Equator over and over again. <laughs> That's a good percentage of the album. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to jump jump in now yeah. and just say that yeah. my only complaint with Equator is that the part with just Russell does not go on long enough. <laughs> I wish we were going from – it's brilliant. It's brilliant. But I'll, I'll come back to it. But I just got to say I, I love that, the whole second half of it. They uh, oh, yeah. they should have put a little a little dent or, or whatever at, at the uh, at the edge of the vinyl record like they did with uh, Sergeant Pe Peppers Pepper you know one at the and end and just repeat yeah. the Equator 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 ad infinitum <laughs> perfect that's a good idea <laughs> well my number six is falling in love with myself I know I don't, I haven't agreed with anybody yet so okay. Uh, I, I like that as a definitely change of pace, you know, a lot more orchestral. Um, and, you know, and it, it reminds me of the song later on, um, I Married Myself. And he's like, I, I I bring home the bacon and cook it myself. I need it myself. Eat it Here's myself. My help. Yeah. I said, sorry, Morrissey. But, um, yeah, so, I don't know, it was, it was hard. 1.6 is falling in love with myself. Yep. One, two, uh, my 1.6, well, I should preface this by saying I think <laughs> all of the next songs are absolute classics. So every one of them. But if I'm going to say a 1.6, I will painfully say talent is an asset. 
Um, but I don't have any reason for it. I, I love the song, but it's only relative to these other songs, I guess. But that's it. I would have to put it there just because the other songs are even better in my mind. What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Mm. All right. Barry? Yep. Christian, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. So, yeah, I, uh, what did I do? Uh, here in Heaven. This is the one I, I, I swapped mm -hmm. these two, Here in Heaven and, and Falling in Love. And I think yeah. I gave Here in Heaven just a little bit more of a scotch up just because I just the the lyrical conceit is just too yeah it, it's just too interesting it's just too cool I uh it's it's too it's too fun just to just to read <laughs> and the music being great as well so yeah that's my number six here in heaven we got everybody yeah okay so number five for me is Falling in love with myself again. And I, I was just thinking now, like, what other band would write a song like that? You know, like, like Paul Simon, falling in love with myself again. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Just, right. Uh, yeah. So that's all I have to say. I, I love the song, but it's at number five. I have four that I love even more. Yeah. And the top five. Um... Number five for me, Haston Maniana Monsieur. Um, really, really wants to. Uh, I want to go backpacking across Europe after listening to this song every time. It's just the lyrics are just so good. But um, the band that are covering this, interestingly, um, are actually doing it at our studio, and I've instructed them that they're going to have to bring some castanets to to play. So it has to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a great tune. Yeah, hard now. It's really hard. Number five, Haston Maniana Monsieur. Yeah, that that riff too is so catchy. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to work really well, I think, as a heavier rock song. Yeah. yeah. Monty. Uh, 1.5. I'm going to have to. Don't go cry. With... Don't cry, Monty. This I'm, I'm not crying and I'm not drinking latte. So I'm good on all counts. But my number 1.5, because everything is relative. Oh, there you go. That's a Sparks lyric, isn't ah. it? Uh, <laughs> um, oh, my 1.5 right. would have to be Here in Heaven. But again, it's all because of the quality of the other songs. So. My number five is Hasta Mignana Monsieur. Um, you know, I agree with Tim. I finally somebody, although I was close with Christian on this other two. And, uh, you know, when I first heard it, I mean, the lyrics, I mean, I guess that's the, it has a title in it, Come On To My House. That's the only one, because they don't have a title track for that, right? Yeah. So I guess that's it. Yeah. yeah. Paul? What do you got, Paul? Um, this is the first time Tim and I have differed. So uh, my, <laughs> my number five is Talent Is An Asset, oh. which uh, the lyrics are hilarious isn't it? just the, the whole idea of like albert einstein albert einstein's overprotective mother <laughs> i mean who else could come up with a song like that I perfect know. yeah my number five uh thank god it's not christmas uh i lo i love the cascading chorus it's so it's wonderful and let me let me frame this by saying that um, since I was a kid, I was a huge Queen fan, and I've mentioned that several times. Ten years after this song, they released a single called "Thank God It's Christmas," yeah, um, which you know, is has zero cynicism at all in there in typical '80s Queen fashion. And when I discovered Sparks and I first played this album and I saw the title of the song, I thought I've got to hear this. So I've always, it's always been slotted, slotted in my mind as the cynical pre buttle to thank God it's Christmas. Um, and uh, for that reason, I love it, but it is still, where are we? Number five. Yep. Okay. My number four is Hasta Manana Monsieur. However you pronounce <laughs> the it. The banana one. Written by Russell Mayo. I... I remember reading it somewhere, and it really stuck with me. I think Russell actually mentioned that he wrote the lyrics mm. for it. So, hmm. uh, hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. we're skeptical. Like, <laughs> do the search engines. You don't say. So, so number four for me, I didn't want to be the first person to say this song. So oh. no, <laughs> um, don't, don't say it. it. Don't, say, don't it. say it. Uh, number four for me this time ain't big enough. No, <laughs> it's all number one. Heresy. Mm, I know, I know. Um, maybe it's because I've heard it so much. I don't yeah. know. There's three That's songs. True. Three songs I prefer on this album, um, and those three songs were straight in the one, two, and three for me. And then this is the the best of the rest. Um, but it's a what a brave choice for a single in 1974. Um, yes, it and, was. Wow, and to think that it got so high in the charts as well, just just brilliant. Just brilliant. We're on four. Uh, I okay. guess. Yep. Yeah, I'm one of those people that do like Equator. I love the ending part. I, I would I'd be mesmerized, mesmerized and singing along with Russell. You know, so I just must. I don't know. I must make me in a, in a mood. But I like that song a lot. And usually I like really fast songs. But um, but I, you know, the lyrics again are great. You know, um, this is the day and time and place. And I wonder, wonder where you are. Surely we said it for three p.m. Surely we said it was March the tenth. You must be right around the bend. You know, I just like that whole. I mean, I have the lyrics of all of them, but that one cracks me up. Yeah. You know, they all crack me up, even though when if they're about death or heaven or suicide. <laughs> Honey. I'll jump in. Uh, for me, number four would have to be Amateur Hour. Um, and, you know, I feel like I'm a broken record. I feel like every time I need to apologize for the choice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, it's all relative to the other songs. Uh, but this is. I mean, it's a great song. And, you know, they used to play it live all the time. And then on their last tour, they dropped it mid-tour. And they haven't resuscitated it yet. And as much as I would love to hear it, I think it's just one more thing about Sparks that makes them stand out that they're willing to drop a song that's this popular <laughs> right in the middle of a tour. So, you know, hey, go for it, guys. And um, I love the song. But I guess relative to the others, I would say it's one for Paul? Um, I'm going to go for Hasta Mañana, Monsieur, which it, it, it's just perfect. <laughs> um, what can I say about it? The, the, the whole concept of being with a woman and you can't speak the same language, it, that's another thing that they've revisited a few times, and it's just hilarious. The, uh, the opening line is, uh, I tried to tell you in the night but a girl like you, with a girl like you, I could do without guided tours. You tried to tell me in the day that your leading exports were textiles and iron ore. Which I think, but, but it's just amazing. I, I can't believe that anybody would have the audacity to make that the opening line of a song. Yeah. Well, not not to mention the well-known classic line from that song. You know, the Kant line. I mean, yeah, uh, you mentioned Kant, and I was shocked. Where I come from, none of the yeah. girls have such foul tongues. <laughs> about, about that line, uh, there did Russell a, write that, Larry? Uh, Larry? I think <laughs> he did. Seriously, he wrote just that, that line. one line. But just that was, one line. There was a Sparks. I think it was from the fan club. A Sparks <laughs> lyrics book, right? And wow. for that song, they didn't have it spelt K A N T. They had it spelt the other way. Really? Yeah. See you next Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the C word. It's very yeah. Liberal. Not T Russell. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Number four. Uh, as uh, number four for me is also hasta mañana, Monsieur. And me being a Spanish speaker and living so close to Mexico, I must pronounce it correctly. Well, the first part. <laughs> hasta mañana, Monsieur. Um. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's I'm we're just roll, rolling a die, you know. I mean, it's as good as the next three, uh, but and but there, there it sits today at least, number four. So back in 1974, my number three was probably my least favorite on the album, but slowly through the years, I've grown to really love it. It's thank God it's not Christmas, and that piano. Just that little simple piano. And I love 
uh, in concert. Like back in the day, he he would extend his piano solo, so it's like four more bars or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's my number three. My number three. Um, all right, that's it. Um, yeah, I love the end of this song. So all that Leave Albert's country, Leave Albert's uh, hemisphere. Leave Albert's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. This, and it fades very, out slowly. Yeah. yeah, it fades out. So fun and ridiculous. But yeah, a great song. Great, great. My th number three is Amateur Hour. It was hard, you know, I think because I've heard it a lot, I guess. But um, yeah. and, and such a big hit, but um, I, you know, has a couple of my favorite lines. Our voices change at a rapid pace. You start a song as tenor and then end as bass. Yeah. So love that, and it's a lot like playing the violin. You cannot stop. You cannot start and be Yehudi Menuhin. Yeah. You know, I had to look. Who's Yehudi? You know, I had to look at yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know who that was, but you know, two of my favorite lines. So that's number three for me. Yeah. Great guitar. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, my number th number three is uh, talent is an, I'm is an asset. That. My number three and number two, they both uh, have this what I think of as like a carnival pop sound. Like you could like, it, there's a feeling that you're just on a carousel with the mm -hmm. with the, the the way the the songs flow and uh, and the rhythm and everything. Uh, so yeah, number three, talent is is an asset. You guys have have said. A whole lot about it. I don't think there's anything else I can add. Albert Einstein stuff. Great, very Ron. Love it. Yep. Um, I'll go with uh, Thank uh, God It's Not Christmas. Shall I go? Oh. Uh, yeah, um, so Thank God It's Not Christmas. Um, I, I was lucky enough to see Kimono My House performed with an orchestra at the Barbican in London. Oh. And when they did this it wasn't like a lot of bands you'll have it'll be the band backed by an orchestra but this was a purely orchestral version with just ron on a grand piano and um it was such a christmasy version of this song i've tried to find a good copy of it on youtube but unfortunately there's nothing with good sound quality but yeah i i, I think it would have been so easy for them to just twist this song a little bit and make it an actual Christmas song, yeah. and then sold millions of records, out. and they could have retired right then. <laughs> but you know, being Sparks, they have to um, put their edge to it. And um, yeah, the it's just like a really beautiful way of saying that you hate somebody. Like, thank God it's not Christmas <laughs> when it's just you and me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I absolutely love that. But yeah, I recommend anybody seek out that version from the Barbican because with, with all the jangly bells on it and wow. the soaring strings and brass, yeah, it was, uh, it was really special, that concert. That sounds great. Monty? Well, uh, I have been switching my number in two and three this entire conversation. <laughs> and the one that happens to be in the number, well, it's just so hard. But the one three slot right now is Equator. Um, like I said, like I kind of indicated before, I see no flaws in this song. I could hear, I could listen to it all day. I just love, what I love about it is that it's so technologically ahead of its time, you know, kind of having that vision of just having the Mellotron or whatever he's using to kind of gradually, you know, go away. Russell's voice and then having the layers of rustling. It's one of the few places on the album where Russell gets to really sing out, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so from my perspective, I'm going to stick with it as number three. And I meant what I said. I, I, I love the ending. I love the ending. I think it's really creative, innovative, great stuff. Chris, what are we at now? We had two? Three. Three? Mm -hmm. Talent yeah. is an asset is what I have. Got. Oh, I thought we already did that. Yeah, I think you did. Didn't you? I wonder if I skipped one. You did. Five was, uh, my five was, thank God it's not Christmas. My four was Austin Manana. I think I mentioned that. Talent as an asset was my number three. Oh, well, huh. <laughs> Are we at two? Are we doing twos yet? Yeah. Right. Going to be starting twos, yep. Okay. Who, who didn't do a three? Yeah, Larry who didn't do a three? three? Okay. <laughs> Got it. All right. So my, my number two, and the same thing with Monty, the, I, these kept 
switching in my mind. Um, oh, well, not the same two, but the my two and three. Uh, Amateur Hour. Um, it's an awesome song. That's, uh, you know, again, you know, roll a die. Uh, Amateur Hour, number two. So my number two is... Wait, Larry, this is your number three. <clears throat> no, I did thank God it's not Christmas. Okay, okay. Yeah. So so we're all doing number two now, right? We, we've right. all got three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. I stand corrected. My number two is Here in Heaven, one of my all-time favorite Spark songs. Uh, I love Russell's vocals on that, uh, especially... Uh, second thoughts is that what you had that those lines there uh, I don't have all of you seen their version on the midnight special YouTube channel yes yeah that's yeah, even that. yeah like the whole band is just incredible so yeah number two is here in heaven for me you know the lyrics of course and everything else about it so number two for me, um, thank God it's not Christmas. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, again, like everyone said, the piano, just amazing. I love the guitar solo in it. I yeah. love the, it's got some of my favorite lyrics. Um, if this were the same, we'd be very suave, but it's just the rain washing down yeah. the boulevard. Yeah, I just love it. It's just, mm -hmm. just a beautiful song. And only one song better on the, on the album. Yeah. My number two is Talent is an Asset because that is the song that I heard late night. My family was asleep. I was watching Don Kirsch's rock concert. And then all of a sudden I heard the drums and the hand clapping. And then I saw Ron. I'm, I'm team Ron. And I saw him playing, ding, ding, ding. And I, from that moment on, I just went, what? <laughs> um, uh, I ran out the next day, bought the album. The yeah. same day, joined the fan club and pestered Mary Martin for many years. Um, uh, so that talent is an asset. I, 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 think, I think the lyrics are, are hilarious. Like, everything's relative. We are as relatives, and we don't need any non-relatives. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just the whole relative thing that's cracking me up, and that yeah. he's a genius. And it's just, it's my second. Could have been mm -hmm. one, just because that was the song that started it all, started me down the path of madness, and I'm still on So we're at number two, huh? Mm -hmm. So I want to just say, if you had asked me to do this list 20, 30 years ago, this would not have been my number two. It what better not be this town ain't big enough for both of us, Monty. <laughs> Trust me. Don't worry. You won't be disappointed. But I mean, you know, it's, it, when I was younger, it was like, you know, it was a good song on the album. But as I got older, I started to really hear it. Um, I could just hear, I'm talking about, thank God it's not, not Christmas. And there's so much to it, and it is so classic. It, it, the template mm -hmm. of everything great about Sparks is just captured on there. The the way the music and the lyrics come together and tell a story, the irony of the title, as others have pointed out, and just the beauty of the playing from Adrian Fisher and from Dinky Diamond and everyone, it comes together such an opus, such an epic tune. And you know it has that grandiosity that they would sometimes put into their music late, 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 later. So you know, to me, I've really come to just appreciate. Thank God it's not Christmas. It's an absolute Sparks masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. You're here. I'll go for mine, which is uh, which is also here in heaven, which um, musically, obviously, it's stunning. But the world they build, the story of somebody backing out of a suicide pact, I guess yeah. that, that that idea alone, let alone just how good the lyrics are, yeah. uh, line by line, is I, I, I really like that. And um, it's the, the sort of lyrics for you know you could hear them in passing, and it sounds like you know typical pop fodder. You know, up here in heaven without you. Oh, it's, it's like any band could do that, but it might be on the second listen or the third listen, or a few listens down the line. Hang on, no, there's something else going on here, and that's another thing I, I love about Sparks. You've got this; you, you can enjoy it on the surface just by, you know, the rhythm and the cadence of the lyrics, and you know, some 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 funny lines, but 
the more you listen to them, the, the more you get from these songs. Yep. So, yeah, here in heaven, I think it's. In fact, I was reading through the lyrics today, and I, I, I thought I knew that song backwards, but there were lines in it that I hadn't paid any attention to. That really made me laugh. Like there, there are many, many sheep. <laughs> that, that just struck me <laughs> very funny. I've never noticed before. Um, yeah, there are many people, many, many sheep, and oh, I, I can't remember the lines now. But yeah, it just made me chuckle. Yeah. Who's next here, Christian? Is this the? I Number did my. Two. I did my two. Did you? I did. It was amateur hour, so okay. I okay. Uh, drum roll, and not that it's going to be a surprise, right? Right. Process of, of elimination. Look, uh, as many times as I have heard this town, and more so for a lot of you guys who have been fans decades longer than me, it uh, I, look. It's a perfect piece of pop. It's it it starts off it kicks off the album in such a great way sets the tone for the next forty or so minutes. Uh, it's brilliant in little specific ways, uh, just like oh I don't know what makes Pink Floyd's money you know so memorable is that cash res register ching that sound that you hear that that pistol fire yeah. really sticks in in your head. They don't overuse it. Uh, it, it you know it's one of the best very best songs of 1974 and uh, it's my number one yep it's my number one too and you know I, i've heard the song many 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 times i'm still not tired of it and even if you know even if i was tired of listening to it it's it's not the song's fault like you know these songs, <laughs> that, get, you know, these songs that get overplayed on the radio right you get tired of them it, it doesn't take away from it being a great right. song, right? Uh, so yeah, number one for me is this town ain't big enough for both of us. Um, but it wasn't for me, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've gone against the grain of it here. But yeah, my number one is here in heaven, yeah. um, which is yeah, as everyone said, but the lyrically just such a dark song, but so funny. <laughs> you know, that, that black humor at the heart of it is just. Uh, I mean, who else would write a song about a suicide like pact? You know. Uh, going wrong like that. It's just so funny, but... And yeah, less than three minutes long. Perfect little pop song. My number one, of course, is This Town, for all the reasons that were said. Um, you know, like the, the, with the pistol starting, you know, it, it's like, and off, and we're off, you know, and they mm -hmm. go off in the rest of the album. So it's a classic song. I've heard it probably more than any other song they've ever done, but I still have it as number one. I'll just jump in. I you got to give the song its due, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, there's a reason it's been so enduring and for so long. And I I've actually listened to it over and over sometimes when when uh, when uh, trout when you know when traveling or uh, commuting, and I've actually like just studied it. And it's three minutes and two seconds, and it doesn't. It, fade out it, it it does it just ends and it's a perfect song from beginning to end and you get that beautiful Russell vocal right at the end and boom it's done and the fact that it's three minutes and two seconds really impresses me i mean it's just there's not a wasted note in that entire song it's so great to hear when you're seeing them live it's like yeah this is it this is it this is how you know they're bringing it home so you know it's number one number one with a bullet yeah yeah, it's exactly the same for me. Obviously, this town is, it's just exhilarating after all these listens. Um, I, I, I don't think I could ever get bored of that record. With most Spark songs, we were saying they're like a Marmite band. So you know, I'd understand people not liking a Sparks record. But I don't trust anybody who doesn't like this town ain't big enough for the both of us. It's, it's the perfect pop song. It's the no introduction, <laughs> the, the introduction is magical. Um, the outro, like like Monty yeah. was saying, that just that uh, hitting that high note and bang, it's uh, my heart's beating a bit just talking about it. It's so exciting, <laughs> and that middle eight as well. Da -da -da -dun -da 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 -dun. Yeah, Seeing yeah. that on a repeat of Top of the Pops, that, that classic yeah. footage. Uh, I think we were saying on the last podcast, we all fell in love with Sparks from seeing 
um, concert footage of this town being performed live. And I, I think it's the perfect song for bringing people into the Sparks world. And that wraps it up. But, but let's just before we go, let's talk, you know, just for a bit of, of the follow up propaganda in the same year. I think they hit it out of the park with. Like, how do you follow up Kimono My House? Well, they propaganda. Did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same year. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And Russell wrote all the songs on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I so, a little known fact. <laughs> Please don't make us rank the songs on propaganda. Yeah, I know. Let's I know. Or at least give us some prep get time. started with that yeah. right now. I mean, that's one of my favorite <laughs> album covers is propaganda. Yeah. Definitely. It still and, is. And, Every single one it just cracks me up. You know, tied And I, I almost think lately, the last couple of years, I, I might even love it more than Kimono My House. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing album. Um, I think... You know, one one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is the uh, producers and how they have they impacted them. And I think with Muff Winwood on those two albums, they it was just the perfect match for what they wanted to do at that time, and the sound that he was able to produce from the band at that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think it was it was a brilliant pairing, and I think that that's part of the reason why these albums are so effective because they wanted that they wanted somebody who had put them into the mainstream and he knew how to do it and they were in sync and it, i think that's yeah. a big part of it too i think it shows yep and i think they made their just the right jump to um visconti for the album after that uh for indiscreet just the right time because you could see them pushing against the borders of where they kind of were from a uh, kimono my house you know it's part pop it's part glam that uh, part you know bubble gum part glam and you could see them pushing past those parameters with the next album that also muff produced and then they, everything just exploded for the album after that but, yeah I, I agree muff winwood did a fantastic job with those. yeah and 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 you're also getting into some of the things i was talking about earlier because here they were you know, singing these songs with the lyrics that we've quoted throughout here, these really sophisticated lyrics, these melodies and arrangements that are very sophisticated. And the, you know, they, they were a pop group and the girls were all over them. And you could, there's videos of them being rushed on stage, you know, and it's such a, such a contradiction, you know, they, it's one of the things that's so fascinating about them to me. Yeah, they're very so literary. It would have been so easy for them to follow that same route as well. You know, they were onto a winning they, formula. They could, they could have been doing the, you know, kimono and propaganda sound for years on end, like other bands yeah. were, right? Mm -hmm. yep. mm. Absolutely. I'm really interested in the leap from Half Nelson to kimono as Mono, well. Yeah. Uh, how, how much the band were transformed. Those first two albums, they are really good. Mm -hmm. But this was a stratospheric leap forward, I think. Just um, how contained and poppy and sophisticated these songs are. Um, yeah. Uh, they developed so quickly. Yeah. I think it certainly helped having um, musicians, the quality of the, the guys that got on those early albums. Dinky Diamond is the, such an amazing drummer. And, yes, he is. And yeah, Martin Gordon's bass sound on, on Kimono Third is just, yeah. It really, really did help. I think pushing them in, into the next level. I think if they'd have come over here with, with the Mankeys and tried to do this, a similar thing, I don't think it would have. Too weird. Yeah. No, they had to have somebody that could really rock and you know just uh, glam it out or whatever. You know, and that was it. The perfect, perfect pairing. But yeah. I think that's where the producer factor comes in, as well as the as the the uh, bandmates who were such a they were a, so 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 good at what they did. Yeah. Yeah. I have Paul will have to continue that. I have a lot of thoughts about that. <laughs> but yeah, we'll you guys that have lots minute. of thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but By it, it is like, fascinating how they made that change, you know. Yeah. It's, a, it's a real radical change. Very radical. Yeah. yeah. And and every time they changed like in a pretty big way like from propaganda to indiscreet, I was with them. 
And when uh, Number One in Heaven came out, I was worried at first, right? Oh, yeah. you know, they're going disco and, you know, I didn't like Thank disco. You. But as soon as I heard it, it's like, it sparks. I love them. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So let's wrap Very it up. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Our, our heads are spinning. Uh, Tim, do you have any final words? Same time tomorrow. Um. No, it's, it's, uh, thank you very much for having me on. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this, even though it's uh, probably taken weeks off of my life and stress of trying to rank these songs in order. <laughs> I know. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been fun. I've really enjoyed myself. Yeah. And it's been great to meet you all as well. Nice I've, to meet uh, you. Great. Yeah, I've been yeah, watching right, your respective YouTubes and listening to your podcasts over the last year or so. So it's good to finally uh, get to see, speak to everybody, even though it's just over the internet, you know, just uh, spending this time. Thank Thanks, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, following the the progress of uh, their yeah. covers project. Yep, it's going to be definitely. really cool. It's going to be good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now I'm looking forward to that too. And it's always nice to see all all of you, um, Paul and Monty. They 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 know they talk about a lot of different things. By the time I get catch up to their your your thought or whatever, they they're indefatigable. They, I'm like they've gone on twenty other ones. I'm I'm behind. You know, I'm too busy running around doing things. I'm like, what, what, what are they on about now? <laughs> I always feel bad for I'm swamping the chat, but <laughs> I said, look at this. I got some catching up to do. But why you know, is the angels a statement about their career at that point in time? You know, oh, no. <laughs> no. no, it is. Yeah. It honestly is. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Oh. <laughs> okay. So thanks everybody and, and right. Tim will have a link for your uh yes. Kickstarter and links for everybody else. Just just uh it's, it's I guess it's the same links as before, right? I'll just copy them hmm. from the last live chat. Yeah. I think and I don't Tim know if you started your new blog since we were last. I, I think I have uh, I've started contributing to it again. It's an old blog, but I've started contributing ah. to it again. Just I'm really enjoying retro, you know, going through those albums. So sure, we can. I'll, I'll send you the link. Yeah, send, send me the link for that. Okay. So that'll put pressure on me to do another writing, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Larry. Larry. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Great seeing you. Bye. Bye. Hasta mañana. Hasta mañana.